so Where? In the Quran, in the Hadith. In the Quran, in a Hadith, for example, when we talk about them being Rusul, right? This puts them at the same thing as being a Messiah. Really? Yeah. Somebody so, who's so where, a message. where is where, okay? So what is the reference for that? Like, is is, is, it, is it in the Quran or a Hadith where you can equate a that a result, like you said, sure, right? to, to a, messiah. a messiah? No problem. I'll get you on that. Come back next Sunday. We'll bring you some books. Okay. So I asked you, is there anywhere in the Quran or the Hadith, yes, where anybody else other than Jesus mm -hmm. is called the Messiah? Yes. You said yes. Yes. Stop! I want to take a selfie for you. Please don't move. Thank you. Tell us about it, brother. Who was Jesus? I, I gave you tons of things about Jesus. Don't waste my five minutes. You are wasting my five minutes now. We are trying to, be, to waste my time, right? I, I understand. It's okay. Listen. When Jesus, he said, I am the truth. Allah, he called his name and he put it in the Quran. He said, this is my name. I am Al Haq. But this is Jesus said that. So Allah is copying Jesus. When Jesus He said, I am the way, Allah He is copying that. When Jesus said, I am the resurrection, Allah He copied that. He says He is the resurrector. But Allah He says, and He confirmed that Jesus He is resurrect. Jesus He said, He forgives sin and He forgives sin. You know, when 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 the, when the, the the Jews they saw Jesus, He was forgiving sin of someone. They said to Him. Like in, they, they, are, they are saying in their mind, he can read their mind. He said to them, isn't it, which one is easier? To say your sin is forgiven or to say to him, go and carry your bed and run. That is Jesus, my friend. And Jesus, he can do what nobody can do. And always we need to ask ourselves a question. All those things about the Messiah, even his name is unique. By the way, the Muslims, if somebody called himself the Messiah, they will kill him. Yep. You can call yourself Muhammad, but you don't call yourself the Messiah. No. Nope. And even, even in Islam, the Messiah is the one who will come back in the judgment day. Yep. And he is going to kill the pig. Yep. And he is the one who will bring victory. Yep. And he is going to be the hero. Yep. Not Muhammad. Nope. Muhammad right now in the grave. Yep. He stink, according to the hadith. He stink, enter the Rasul. Yep. So it says that this punishment were about different crimes and things has been handed down to us uh -huh. from the laws of all of the Masis, which is all of the Anbiya. Previous lie and deception. If they said this is not a part of the Hadith, no problem. Khalas, my bad, my bad. But this is not a lie, it's not a deception. Is the entire Sanad, Hadathna Abu Bakr, Hadathna Al Waqiyya, Al Mubarak, Al Hassan, and Amr. You understand the chain, right? 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 This is not a part of the hadith, no problem. Khalas, my bad, my bad. But this is not a lie, it's not a deception. So, uh, my understanding, which I have from other Muslims, which is part and parcel of why I hold them and have read in the Islamic sources, that the Quran itself does intercede for Muslims or will on the day of judgment. Right? The Quran will appear as a pale man and will say that he was. <laughs> Muslim's companion in life will intercede for him. Is that not correct? Can you give me a reference for that? Yeah. The hadith. Which hadith? Seriously, you don't think I'm going to go back? I mean, like, I don't know. Are you saying that's not in the hadith? Uh, that is not in any authentic hadith that okay. I've ever read. So you said that. Well, that's fine. If you say it's not authentic. Hold on, So, to say the Quran. Yeah. Stop. I want to take a selfie for you. Please don't move. Thank you. Tell us about it, brother. They claimed there was a hadith in a tirmidhi. Jami a tirmidhi is a book of hadith written by Abu Isa a tirmidhi that said that the Quran will come on the day of judgment in the form of a pale man and intercede for its reciter. Because I've taught hadith and I have a master's degree in hadith, I knew that hadith is not in Tirmidhi. And I told him this is not authentic hadith and this is not in a Tirmidhi. Uh oh. And you'll see them in the video on their phones, they're trying to find it. 
And they cannot, because it's not in a Tirmidhi. They were lying. This is a lie. Maybe they did it out of... Uh, maybe it's a mistake. Oh, no, they are lying, my friend. Lying. First of all, Abdul, does it really make a difference if it's a Tirmidhi? I mean, all your books is garbage. And you yourself, you just admit it. You just said it's life. Which means you are saying to us that it doesn't matter what book. Our book is boo-boo. Boo-boo? I cannot use the word shit in YouTube. That's not right. Let us say it. So our books are a piece of shit. So it doesn't matter where you find it. We have a lot of shit there. That's what you are saying to them, you coward. It is you witnessing to us and now making a video to us to say to us, our books is full of shit about the prophet shit. And now we are going to delete it and we will say it is weak shit. Excuse my <clears throat> shitty conversation. But you forced me to say it. I mean, people don't dare to say the word, right? Say it as it is. Who like it, like it, don't like it, get lost. You are making a video for us to say to us that our books is a trust, not a trustworthy. We Muslims, we lie about our prophet and that makes sense. We Muslim, we lie even about our prophet. Can you believe it that this coward, he is even saying that the second they say we are, this is wrong, this is not true, this is a false, this is the if he is saying that we Muslims and our scholars are a bunch of liars. And this little Abdul, you will prove it in a minute. Listen carefully. Please guys, don't use it in the chat. I'm allowed to use it because I have a license. I have a degree in Quran, in Islam, brother. That mean, yeah, I have a degree in that thing. You know the thing. And I have a master's degree in hadith. I graduated from the Islamic University of Islamabad with a master's focused in hadith. I have a degree in that thing. Mistake. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. It was a mistake. Uh -huh. But it's not in a tirbi. <coughs> they both. Yeah, just shut up, stupid idiot. I mean, obviously, you do not know what are you talking about. I mean, I don't know what to say to you. I mean, what's wrong with you? Here we go. You are a potato, son of a potato. And Abi Hurairah, and Nabi sallallahu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, by the way, salam, don't forget to salam. Yaji'u al-Qur'an yawm al-Qiyamah fa yaqulu ya rabbu hillahu. Etc. Read the rest. So, and the, the Qur'an will come in the day of judgment, right? Right? Here, a turmudi did not mention the word man. He mentioned that the Quran will come and he will be a lawyer to you and he will defend you. And this is what they are saying, that that a turmudi dhakara ba'da, which means he mentioned part of the hadith. And this is the reference. You are a donkey and you are an idiot. Qala Rasulullah yaji'u al-Qur'ana yawm al-Qiyamah karrajul shahib. The Prophet of Allah, he said, the Quran, he come to you as a pale man and the rest of the Hadith, and then read with me, Abdul, potato. Do you see it? The Turmudi have part of it. The Turmudi did not mention all of it. So who is the one is sure? And you are the one who claim that you have knowledge of Islam. Yeah, hello. They were wrong about it being in a Tirmidhi. They were like, oh, it's Hassan. It's reliable. And you said it's Zaif. Not understanding the science. I have a mass. I do Takhrij work here, right? <laughs> I check Hadith. Now, that Hadith that they mentioned from Ibn Majah, you see the video. He says from Ibn Majah. Here it is on your screen. Here it is on your screen. Look at the cow. What he posted in the screen, he did not post the book of Ibn Majah. No. Nope. Zoom in. Potato, liar, fraud. This is not the book of the Hadith. This is a book written by Al Alabani, a guy he just died a few years ago. It's called Da'ifu Sunani Ibn Majah. Why you don't show us Ibn Majah book where it says it is Da'if? So, what you are trying to say that someone here wrote a book 
about the hadith of Ibn Majah in 1995 or 6 and he said that is uh, this hadith is daif and look what he showed us in the screen daif do you know why he cut it off because he is a coward and he is a dummy he thinks that nobody knows arabic and he is going to speak only to david wood and sam shamoon and anthony roger they don't speak arabic where is the rest potato this is what it says in this book which means even in this book you were not honest and you are a coward this is the book of Al-Albani, and I'm zooming in so people, they can read it in the screen. And there is more details about this hadith, you cut it off. Why? Because it says, and let us see what it says, why I want to talk about it. Let us go there. <laughs> Coward, potato, dummy. Let us see. Let me open the reference. Give me a second. Oh boy. Oh mommy. Oh mommy, mommy blue. Oh mommy blue. <laughs> All right. I want every Muslim who is listening to check the reference we are going to show on the screen. Hold on. Where is the reference? Uh -huh. Let us see. Yeah, here we go. This is the book which he is quoting for us this potato and this is what he quoted for us in the corner that's part only Daif 286 sorry 826 and this is exactly what is here in Arabic 826 Daif so here it says Daif here it says Daif, the numbers are the same. But he cut off the rest of the hadith, where the hadith says, Yahtamilu Tahseen. And it is possible to be accepted as good. Right next to it. Coward. And as long you accepted the book of Al-Alabani to prove your point, now you cannot say, I don't accept Al-Alabani. Is that fair, guys? People, is that fair? If I use, if I am a Muslim, and I use a reference of someone to prove you wrong, that means I am considering this person my top scholar. He is the one who will prove who is right, who is wrong. So by accepting him, you cannot say no more that this hadith is weak. And listen, you donkey, this is Al-Alabani. In the book of, the book name, Al-Silsul Al-Sahihah, Al-Alabani, volume number seven, Published not by Dar es Salaam, as you said. And by the way, you stupid idiot, you said this is Dar es Salaam. Dar es Salaam, they publish Al Albani too. Donkey. They are just a publisher. They are not a, uh, Dar es Salaam is not a sheikh. He said to them, Dar es Salaam. Dar es Salaam, they are quoting Al Albani, you idiot. Sometimes they put the name there of the scholar, or sometimes if there's too many scholars, they don't put the names. Read with me. So this is the, 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 the authentic chain. The book of who? Muhammad Nasr al-Din al-Alabani. The Zucchini guy. Hadith number 2829. Sahih. Sahih. Should I shout lower more? 
What he said about it? يجيء القرآن يوم القيامة كالرجل الشاحب يقول لصاحبه هل صاحب هل تعرفني? The Quran will come in the judgment day as a pale man and he will say to him, Do you know me? So now you Abdul, as long you agree that the one who can judge between us and you is Al-Alabani. Who Al-Alabani is saying it's Sahih. You want to say to me in different book, he says it is weak? Well, if he is a stupid, this is your business. He changes mind. This is why he's saying in the in the in the chapter in the in the in the cut. By the way, is that like a fatty shop or something? Ooh. What? So now by accepting Al Alabani, which in the same hadith he is saying it is possible to uh, to make it Hassan. And later the idiot he changed his mind and he considered Sahih. And you know, here we go, let us post the link for everybody. So whoever a Muslim is watching, you tell me the guy he accepted Al Alabani. I go with it, no problem. Here we go. This is Al Alabani. Every Muslim in the chat, please open the link. Check it out. Read by yourself. You can use Google Translation. Does it say that this is from the this this book have only the authentic hadith? As this is why it's called as Silsila Sahiha, the chain of authenticity. Authenticity. And now I'm going to use Google Translation. Peace be upon him. <laughs> to show you that. Anthony, he said to you, it's philosophy. You said to him, <laughs> like what? <laughs> you are wrong. You do not know, don't you? You idiot donkey. Sorry for insulting donkeys. Did you see that? Yeah, we're, we're okay. past that. Come on. We're not. Because... <laughs> okay. So, first thing, your delving in kalam to me is useless, right? Because I don't believe in ilm al kalam. Okay? Yeah, but I'm, I'm saying I thought that was your view. And you could correct me if that's not I, your view. I do not believe in ilm al kalam, so obviously that's not my view. But I'm just using Kalam in the sense of theology, like Akita. Do you know what Kalam is? Yeah. What is Kalam? But, well, it's philosophy, but... So, uh, it's not. But it, that's philosophy. Uh, well, but it's... So you don't it's, know what Kalam is. It's the same is. idea. Uh, <laughs> it is not. Okay, well, go ahead. What is Kalam? Uh, go ahead. Listen, Anthony, what is Kalam? Because you brought it up, but obviously you don't understand what Kalam is. I, I'm, what I'm, is just, kalam? I'm just using it in the sense of people I thinking through using issues it. of Islamic Akita. And coming to certain conclusions, I know that your methodology would be Quran and Sunnah. That's how you derive your Akida. Right? Anthony, you brought up Kalam. Mm -hmm. I'm just asking you, what is Kalam? Ilm al Kalam. What is it? It's not philosophy is falsafa. So what's Ilm al Kalam? They're related concepts. What it's are, basically theology. It is not. Uh, From a Christian perspective, that's how we view it. It's in Kalam, as you're using it, understanding Islamic Aqidah, right? Mm -hmm. What is Kalam? That, but that's what I'm telling you, allegedly. <laughs> right? uh, at least, uh, don't know. He's I, saying that's how he's using it. Okay, okay. I got you. So let me explain it to him okay. now. You go ahead. Anthony, you good? All right. So, philosophy is called falsafa. That's basic philosophy. Kalam is use of certain Greek principles, not philosophy in general. Sense? In the use of understanding Aqaid, and this is something that was brought on by the Ashari and the Maturudi and Ahlul Qur'an. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yes. Who started Ashari? Uh, Ashari. What's his name? Ashari. Anthony, he said to you, it's philosophy. You said to him, <laughs> like what? <laughs> You are wrong. You do not know, don't you? <laughs> you idiot donkey. Uh, uh, Sorry for insulting donkeys. Isn't this is your scholar saying that 
علم الكلام is philosophy oh you know what I think you know better than him I mean you are higher I mean come on look first I will prove you that he is higher than you his beard is longer than your beard and he lives in Saudi Arabia so he do not need to compromise hey Sheik what is علم الكلام uh, Anthony Roger he said it is philosophy what say you حكم في البخاري بأن يجدد الذي يشتغل بعلم الكلام ويترك ايش الكتاب والسنه. علم الكلام مقدمات فلسفيه. <تصفيق> علم الكلام مقدمات مقدمات فلسفيه. It is nothing but a philosophy introduction. So when you idiot you say to Anthony Roger who is not a Muslim, he don't speak Arabic and he do not should not have even a knowledge about it. I mean, this is not his field. And you say to him, you laugh at him. You and you say to him, <laughs> I know this is coming. You don't speak Hebrew and you don't speak Arabic. And Elijah is God with us. But Elijah in the, in the Hebrew language means God is with us. So if, if that makes Jesus God, then Elijah is also a God. <laughs> when every Muslim scholar agrees, that this is why it's called the Ilmul Kalam, you idiot, which means the science of using words, philosophy. Stupid idiot. Anything don't agree with the brain, they don't agree with it. <laughs> which means they are smarter than you. <laughs> like when your prophet, he says in the heaven, you will do Dahman, Dahman. <laughs> you will go for that later. It's approved by Alabani, by the way. Dahman, Dahman. <laughs> If hard, if hard. <laughs> Continue. I wonder why. I wonder why they're ashamed to show what happened. I know. But anyway, we're putting the whole thing out. So you can judge yourself which belief makes sense or doesn't believe make sense. And exactly. that, that's up to the people. When we have the Islamic Aqidah, we presented it. They have their belief. You know, one plus one plus. You know, like one plus one plus one. I agree with you. I mean, Islam makes sense. If you believe in Allah, Allah will increase your size of your penis. And because size does matter, and Allah is Akbar, as you know. And the word Akbar in Arabic does not mean greater, it means bigger in size. Sometimes it can be about age, and sometimes it can be about something else. Hmm. So, it makes sense. If you believe in this God, this God will give you endless penis, and a lot of virgin waiting for you, and brother, nobody touched their vagina, brother. They are brand new, and the wax is there. And you will cut... The you know, you know, Allahu Akbar makes sense, brother. And not only that, the Quran promises us women with big boobs. No, but we have to admit, I mean, this is the religion makes sense because which religion it should make sense more than a religion? Promise me a cup of wine and next to it, big boobs, brother. Are they round or square? You know what? I mean, I'm sick of seeing your round ones. Like, especially when I practice suckling business following the prophet teaching. You know what I'm saying? Talk, um, come on, you know the thing? I mean, Joe Biden, he know it. <laughs> so are we going to have round breast or we will have a square breast? <laughs> I'm wondering about the shape, by the way. And how big the nipples? Are they going to be one mile the same as the size of the wife ass? May Allah ask you? In the Where? In the Quran, in the Hadith. In the Quran, in a Hadith, for example, when we talk about them being Rusul, right? This puts them at the same thing as being a Messiah. Really? Yeah, somebody so, who's so bringing where? a message. And if it's not, khalas, my bad. Khalas, my bad. Shouldn't he say, may Allah forgive me? I repent. I'm sorry for claiming the Prophet said something he never did. Which is a very serious thing, as his own followers said. For a shaykh, I would have expected him to say something like Astaghfirullah, I beseech forgiveness from Allah. But instead he says, my bad. Is this a shaykh? This is not a lie, it's not a deception. I printed it directly, as you can see from Maktab al-Shamil and took it to them. It wasn't a lie or a deception? You sure about that? You forget that we have a picture of your paper. You said you printed it out as it was and brought it to us. No, you didn't. We've seen it and it looks nothing like a page from a hadith book. 
even though you have a master's in hadith, let me tell you how a normal page from a hadith book looks like. You have a body of text with hadiths, and then you have footnotes at the bottom of the page. And usually there's a space between the two sections and a dividing line. Have a look. Here's your footnote that you quoted from different publications. You see hadiths above, footnotes below, and there's a space and dividing line in between which is nothing like the abomination that you showed us on your paper, where there was no space and no dividing line between the hadiths and the footnote. That paper was not printed out straight from a source. It was interfered with to bring together the wording of the footnote together with the wording of the hadith as if they were one, merging them together in an adulterous union that should have never happened. This was done on purpose, Othman. You know it, and so do we. And now onto the new lie that we touched upon earlier. This is the page that he appealed to before he covered it up with his own typed comment. And it actually goes against him because it shows how Muslim commentators differed on what Messiah means. One, the top line, he said, Al-Masih, the Messiah, as siddiq the righteous. The second opinion said, it means Musiha bil baraka which means he was wiped with blessing. The third one from Al-Hasnan al-Basri, it agrees, it said, his name is Al-Masih, meaning he was wiped with blessing. The fourth one here on the screen, it disagrees with the ones above and says, Al-Masih means Al-Malik, the king. All of them are describing the Messiah Al-Masih as a singular, meaning the Lord Jesus Christ, not meaning all the prophets. And they're all differing on what that title means. Unfortunately for him, Allah didn't know what Messiah meant, Muhammad didn't know what Messiah meant, and for hundreds of years afterwards, scholars and commentators differed on what the Messiah, singular word, meant. The one that belonged to Jesus Christ. None of them said, all the prophets are messiahs. That quote that he got, like we mentioned, was copied and pasted and slightly edited from a modern Muslim website describing what the Jews believed. And he edited the sentence to remove the part that said, the Messiah was a Jewish title mentioned in the Torah. But that's not a source. It's just Muslims talking on a website in an article. What is it with him and using modern people's words, pretending they're sources? Those are modern Muslims now talking about Jewish beliefs. What are you talking about? Again, shocking, panicked deception. Muslims listening, if you want to know what the word Messiah means, come to the Bible. It is a Hebrew word. It is not Arabic. We again challenge Uthman ibn Fibin to show us in any credible book where it says all prophets are messiahs in Islam. It doesn't say that. Show us in a source that hasn't been made up or tampered with or doctored or had the page covered up by text that you type. Show us a source from Islam where it says all prophets are messiahs or show us the plural of messiah, al-musahayat, the word, in any reference. You can't because it doesn't exist. The one that you got was a typo in a footnote. Try again. Try again without deception this time. Can you do that? As for sincere Muslims who would like to know what Messiah really means, Messiah means savior. The Jewish people were looking for God to send a Messiah, an anointed one, a chosen one. In John 4, Jesus himself claimed to be the promised Messiah. When he spoke to the Samaritan woman, she said, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. And also in this passage, Isaiah 53, he was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, and we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. For our iniquities. Upon him the punishment was the that brought us that peace brought was us upon peace. him, and, and by his wounds, wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, like sheep have, have gone astray. astray. Each, Each of us has turned to our own, to own way. way, and the Lord Jehovah the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. Yet who of his generation protested? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people, the sin of my people, he was punished. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his soul an offering for sin, he will see offspring and prolong his days. And the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. 
after he has suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied by his knowledge. My righteous servant will justify many. My servant will justify many and he will bear their sins right in your face implodes on Muhammad showing Muhammad is an antichrist. Isaiah says he will bear their sins. Therefore, I'll give him a portion among the great and he will divide the spoils with the strong because he poured out his life unto death and was numbered with the transgressors transgressors for he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors that is the lord jesus christ who came and was pierced for our sins and all our sins were laid on him and by that we are healed and given peace with god that is the messiah the lord jesus christ so muslims come to jesus of nazareth he is the one and only christ messiah savior who can save you this is not a part of the hadith no problem Khalas, my bad my bad, but this is not a lie, it's not a deception. The Messiah. Where? In the Quran, in, in the Hadith. In the Quran, in a Hadith, for example, when we talk about them being Rusul, right? This puts them at the same thing as being a Messiah. Right? Really? Yeah, somebody so, who's so bringing where, a message. Where is, where, okay, so what is a reference for that? Like, sure, is, is, I, it, is it in the Quran or a Hadith where you can equate a that a result like you said right? sure, to, to a, messiah. a messiah no problem i'll get you on that come back next sunday we'll bring you some books okay so i asked you is there anywhere in the quran or the hadith yes where anybody else other than jesus mm -hmm. is called the messiah yes you said yes yes What? Sheikh Osman's not debating anymore. What do you mean? Yeah, no more. Well, we, we don't want to debate. We just no want to chat about a lot, right? He's not talking to you guys again. Like, uh, he's not going to like debate or whatever. Like graduated from the Islamic University of Islamabad with a master's focused in hadith.